Shalom Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benoon, and it's a pleasure to get to speak to you on Danoon Institute of Biblical Research and uh, got a very interesting message today. I've been reading in the book of Yashar, and uh, for those of you that are not familiar with the book, all you have to do is go to Joshua as well as Chronicles and the Bible that we're familiar with, the King James Version, or um, in fact, any, any, any particular Bible, and you'll see the reference or not the rest of these acts mentioned, are written in the book of uh, Jashar, I think is the way that you would pronounce it in, in the English language. Uh, Yashar is how we say it in Hebrew, and, uh, and so we have two references to it, as well as in the uh, Septuagint, uh, you'll find the book there. You also find this particular book written by the prophet uh, Yashar in, in the uh, 1611 King James Bible as well. It's actually one of the books of the Bible there. So <clears throat> why it actually has been dropped out, uh, I, I kind of think that probably the reason why they do not have it included today is because it is pretty much a repeat of Genesis and, and the book of Exodus as well. It's like having those two books combined. And that may have been one of the reasons why we don't see it today. But the sad thing is, is uh, you do get some different perspective on different things that happen there. And that's what I wanted to share with you today, is one of those perspectives that most of us never even think about. And, uh, and I think it's interesting because we are on the precipice of the coming of the two witnesses. And um, I have seen for years now, I've had many people contact me telling me they're either Moses or Elijah. And, uh, and, and some of those uh, precious people have repented and recognized the era of of that knowing uh, that, you know, well, let me just put it this way. If we were called as Moses or Elijah, as far as it would be under the anointing of Moses or Elijah, I don't even really think we would know until the time actually comes when the ministry is to begin. You know, I could be wrong on that, but that would be my thought on it. But the main reason why I've refuted a lot of the people that have claimed to be either Moses or Elijah is for the simple reason is the Scripture clearly gives us in Revelation their ministry. It's three and a half years. And many of these people that claim to come, that have claimed to bring out plagues and everything else on the earth, it's always premature. It's before any of this could actually happen or before it's supposed to happen. And of course, they always come separately. Moses is by himself and Elijah is by himself when we see clearly in the Bible that they're together. But here's the one thing that kind of got my attention as well. And it brought to my mind a brother that actually came to see me in Israel. He's a fine brother. But yet he spoke to me about the staff, the staff that he said God had spoke to him to go and cut down a certain type of tree and make his staff from that. And he believed that he was the prophet Moses, that Moses was actually living in him, or maybe the spirit of Moses was upon him. So, And I don't condemn the brother as far as what he is saying, but I just say it that didn't line up with the word. Well, reading here in the book of uh, Yashar, or Jasher, as we have here, you find out where the stick of Moses comes from. And this was something that was very interesting to me. And I want to just share that with you. This is actually found in the 77th chapter. And uh, we see here that uh, uh, Moses, when he actually is standing in the, in the garden of uh, Raul, his father-in-law, uh, he marries Zipporah, as we know. And, and of course, in the book of Jasher, it, it stays consistent with Raul, not Jethro, being his father-in-law. So Jethro may have more than likely been the grandfather, and that's something that a lot of people have wondered about, was Jethro actually the grandfather and not the actual father, because both men are referred to as his father-in-law in, -law in uh, the book of, of uh, Exodus. But anyway, it says here that when Moses had came out and he was standing in the garden there, he had actually saw, uh, let me just read to you the part here where it says this, and it was while he prayed, he looked opposite to him, and there a sapphire stick was placed in the ground, which was planted in the midst of the garden. He approached the stick and looked and saw the name of the Lord God of hosts was engraved on it. That's God's divine name. yod Hey vav Hey was actually engraved on this rod. Written and developed on the stick. I'm assuming when they say developed, it's kind of like embossed. In other words, it, the letters raised up on the stick. It's interesting though, this, the, this, the rod was sapphire. 
And he read it and stretched forth his hand, and he plucked it like a forest tree from the thicket, and the stick was in his hand. This is the stick with which all the works of God were performed. This is, watch what he says here. It's very fascinating. After he had created heaven and earth and all the host of them, the seas, rivers, and all their fish, see? And when God had driven Adam from the Garden of Eden, he took the stick in his hand and went and tilled the ground from which he was taken. So Adam actually took that staff where God had created the heavens and the earth and everything in them. Well, ironically, even in the book called Adam and Eve, now, and I can't say, uh, as far as the book of Adam and Eve, is that actually a canonical book or not? Uh, Jasher is a lot different. It's in the 1611 King James Bible. It is in the Septuagint. It's mentioned in uh, Joshua in the book of Chronicles as well. So we have authentic authentication for the book of Jasher. But it says there, though, that, that Adam had it. And it is recorded in the book of Adam and Eve that, yes, indeed, he did have a staff, a rod. But the book of Adam and Eve, I don't think, actually says where it came from. It just speaks about that rod that he has. Now, it goes on to say, and this is what I find interesting, that, um, that after that, um, he took the stick in his hand and went and tilled the ground in which he was taken. Now, he didn't use a stick to till the ground. He just took the stick with him. The stick came down to Noah and was given to Shem and his descendants until it came into the hand of Abraham, the Hebrew. And when Abraham had given all uh, he had to his son Isaac, he also gave to him this stick or this staff. When Jacob had fled to uh, Panoram, he took it into his hand. And when he returned to his father, he had not left it behind him. Also, when he went down to Egypt, he took it into his hand and gave it to Joseph, one portion above his brothers. For Jacob had taken it by force from his brother Esau. After the death of Joseph, the nobles of Egypt came into the house of Joseph. Okay, in other words, the noblemen of that day, the Egyptians, came in to the house, the nobles of Egypt. No, it says the nobles of Egypt. It doesn't say they were Egyptian. It just says the nobles of Egypt came into the house of Joseph, and the stick came into the hand of Raoul the Midianite. So maybe Raoul actually worked for Joseph. Anyway, he got a hold of the stick, and when he went out of Egypt, he took it in his hand, and he planted it in his garden. Isn't, isn't it interesting, though, that it was in the midst of the garden? Did you notice that? You know what's fascinating about that is that the tree of life was in the midst of the garden as well. And uh, according to the, I believe it's in Exodus, that the rod was an almond, made from an almond tree. So just a little interesting tidbits there to think about. Um, then it said the Kenites tried to pluck it, uh, pluck it when they endeavored to get Zipporah his daughter, but they were unsuccessful. They were wanting to marry Raul's daughter, but they couldn't get the rod out, so therefore he wouldn't let them get married to his daughter Zipporah. That stick remained planted in the garden of Raul until he who had a right to come and to, uh, to it came and took it. And that was Moshe, Moses. And when Raul saw the stick in the hand of Moses, he wondered at it, and he gave him his daughter Zipporah for a wife. Now, by the way, Zipporah, too, when you read the book of Jasher, actually kept the commandments of Israel faithfully. That's what kind of makes me wonder about whether or not Raul was actually a Hebrew. He was one of the nobles of Egypt, but he worked with Joseph from what it looks like the writings here. And secondly, we find that Zipporah in the book of Jasher was just like that. Of, it compares her to that of Sarah and Leah and Rachel and kept the commandments of God just like that. We also find out about Moses. Moses kept himself his entire life. He never took a wife and never went to another woman because he believed, knowing that he was a Hebrew, he stayed true, waiting until the day that he would marry one of his own people. This is one of the reasons why we find in the, the story of Zipporah when she had to circumcise her son because Moses did not do it, she knew the law of circumcision. Maybe she was Jewish. That's an interesting point to think about. But there's something else I wanted to share with you. We know that later, 
according to the book of Exodus, that this rod ends up going into the Ark of the Covenant. And of course, so, were, so was the law of Moses put into the Ark of the Covenant as well. It's referred to as the book. And the shoe bread, some of the manna was actually put there as well. So I believe today that shoe bread is still alive. You know, we also find out too when we begin to read these things, just interesting, interesting stories that are there. But let me share this with you. Ron Wyatt claimed to have found the Ark of the Covenant buried in the mountain underneath where Yeshua was crucified on Golgotha, the same place where the garden tomb is today. And I've actually seen a picture of what supposedly is the Ark. I say supposedly, but let me just say this. I do believe that Ron really found this Ark. I believe the rod of God is in that Ark. And the reason why I don't believe they've been able to bring this out, it's not time yet. But I do believe that God will deliver that same rod that when He created the heavens and the earth and everything therein, the rod that passed from God to Adam, from Adam to His son Seth, from Seth to Noah, from Noah down to uh, Shem, from Shem to to Abraham, Abraham to Isaac, Isaac to Jacob, and from Jacob to Joseph, Joseph to Raul, and from Raul to Moshe. When the two witnesses return, if God thought that much of that rod that created everything, I believe Moses will be carrying the exact same rod that survived all those thousands of years it'll still be surviving. It'll be another reason why you'll know who the two witnesses are. They won't be coming with a man-made stick. And that's exactly what's happening today. All these people that claim to be a prophet come with a man-made stick. God's not interested in a man-made stick. It's gonna be a sapphire rod, a rod made from an almond tree, a rod with the embossed name of the God's divine name written in the Paleo-Hebrew. That's what's coming. And Moses will carry it. And with it will bring the judgments of Almighty God upon the earth. Also the restoring a pure language that we all may be able to call upon His name. The name that I wished I knew now but He has given us a name until He returns. And that name is Yahshua. Yahshua. Yah is our salvation. I'm Stephen Benun with Danun Institute of Biblical Research. I trust this little short message and somehow is a blessing to you tonight. God bless you. Love you so much. Remember this ministry. We need your support now than ever. As we get ready to go back on the front lines, to cover news for you in different places, as well as to bring you every bit of the word that God will allow us to bring to you that can restore His word as close and as true to the right interpretation that He can give to us as of now. We want to bring that to you. We need your help in making that happen. You're a great part of that. God bless you. We love you, and good night. I'm Stephen Benoon with the Noon Institute of Biblical Research. Find us on IsraelReturns.com. By the way, if you want to give to the ministry, there is a donation place there. Also, you can go to contact and find our address here in the United States where you can mail to us as well. Write us a letter. We'd love to hear your comments. You can email me directly, Stephen Benoon. Not like Dinun. Dinun is my father's name. Benun is my legal name. B E N N U N at AOL.com. Love to hear from you and, uh, and write back to you. Shalom and good evening.